Hey everyone, uh, welcome to day one of past summit of the actual uh, sessions. Um, in fact, I'm about to do this myself because I will, yes, I forgot. Please silence your cell phones um, and please explore everything PASS has to offer you. Uh, there's a whole heap of free online stuff, so you don't actually have to be there either. G'day, I am Hamish Watson. I am from Christchurch, New Zealand. I've traveled a wee way to be here. Um, and the reason why I mentioned that I'm from Christchurch, New Zealand is I have an accent. And when I get excited about stuff, I speak really fast and my accent apparently gets really thick as. Um, so if I'm speaking too fast, please just raise your hand. This is, you know, when the door closes, we're all friends. It's gonna be a nice environment. So just let me know if I'm speaking too fast. The other thing is um, when I get excited, I, I say the word sweet as, which means all good. It's just an accent thing. I'm not sure how sweet it is, but yeah, you get what I mean? Nice. Um, I love community. I love speaking. The reason why I love those two things is I, I like to help people. Um, and my mantra is make stuff go. Uh, I do that in my life. I do that with technology. I do it with people if we need to. Um, I'm actually part, this session is part of the PASS Summit Learning Pathway. Uh, so mine is the first one. It's a beginner session. Um, actually, let's, let's have a quick show of hands. How many people here are Linux administrators or have quite a bit to do with Linux? Okay, cool. Well, he's, <laughs> one, of the, one of the people in the audience is wearing a red hat. The reason why I didn't say that is because I'm actually colorblind. So <laughs> thank you, Randolph. <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah, my session is sort of a beginner session. It, the, the whole point of the learning pathway is to take you on a journey. Um, so my session will lead into two other sessions. And the really cool thing is the two other people are in the room. And if they don't mind, I'm gonna introduce them. So to my left, your right, is Callum Pop Van Gorman. Uh, who will be doing a session on empowering the SQL Server professional with Linux scripting. So some of the stuff I'll be doing, I'll, I'll sort of introduce it and Callum will take it on. And then, <laughs> and to right in front of me and in front of you is Randolph West. Randolph, thanks mate. <laughs> um, who will be doing managing and monitoring SQL Server on Linux from the command line. So, two awesome sessions that mine is kind of like a little introduction to. Um, as I said before, there is an election going on and I really would like you to vote. I'm not gonna tell you to vote for me. I'm gonna ask you to vote for the community. So you would have got an email, so please vote. What am I gonna do today? Well, I'm gonna sort of talk about why the heck would we wanna use this Linux thing, how some things are different, but some things are the same for us and also, we're gonna do a demo. There is a fifth agenda item on there that I haven't put there, but mostly it's to make you laugh. <laughs> because I think, I always think of my sessions as, as a cool, enjoyable thing that I want people to be engaged and, and have some fun at. Um, it's relatively interactive, because there's probably gonna be a few stages where I'm gonna need your help, especially with the coding stuff. I'm glad Randolph's in the room. So, I'd like to introduce you to a person, believe it or not, I'm 22 in this photo. I generally show this photo to um, students when I'm lecturing at universities. I point to that, I point to this. I'm like, maybe don't drink so heavily in your mid to late 20s. <laughs> this is me three years later. <laughs> I'm 25 here, and this was when I was a full-time Linux administrator. Um, yeah. Interesting look the 90s had going on. Um, and then I got on the whole DevOps journey. You would have seen in my intro slide, I, I talk about DevOps. This is why DevOps is good. You can go from that to this. But yeah, a little bit of humor. So why Linux? Well, the fu funnily enough, uh, what happened was Microsoft um, realized our industry is changing. We're all more about open source. And so I have borrowed this slide from Microsoft. 
Um, where we now have heterogeneous environments. It's not all about just running stuff on Windows. We have multiple data types. We have different development languages. And we're all over the place. We're on-premises, we're in the cloud, and we're in, we're in hybrid environments as well. Um, and the cool thing is you now have a choice what you run, where you run it, and in fact how you run it. And along with things like you know, Azure Data Studio, um, who here uh, uses Azure Data Studio, or is at least trying it out? OK, a few of you. A few of you. Cool. Um, well, it's open source, and it's cross-platform. I run it on my Mac here. I can run it on Windows. I can run it you know, on, on a Unix, whatever. Um, and yeah, there's a lot, the world is demanding Linux. And so Microsoft responded to that open source demand. Um, and the thing was, when SQL Server 2017 came out, Microsoft looked at how they could use that version to deliver you know, industry-leading capabilities. And you know, this is a marketing slide that I have used from Microsoft, but it actually is still relevant for us as technical people. Because again, I can, um, I can uh, do things across each platform that I want to. I'm not tied to just do things on Windows. Um, you know, in terms of performance, um, you know, it, it, it's industry-leading performance and security. You know, we, we need to consider security so much more. And, you know, with 2017 and onwards, Microsoft had done so much in this space. Um, and advanced analytics, you know, R and Python are now built in. Um, and, yeah, as, as it says there, end-to-end uh, -end mobile BI on any device. So... The engine itself is changing, but also the way that we do it. And the cool thing is, by embracing Linux, it means that we can now run SQL Server in a container. And I'll show you some really cool stuff, and I'll talk about it as we go along. And it's quite a game changer, because I can now run on any of these platforms, and I have the ability to scale out with Kubernetes. And so in terms of... Um, the Linux world, I can run SQL Server on Red Hat 7.3 and above, um, SUSE uh, version 12, Service 2 and above, um, you know, the Debian uh, distros, so Ubuntu, um, and with Docker, I can run on Mac, Linux, or Windows in a container as I want to. But the cool thing is, you know, we have the same tools, right? So, Matt, first thing someone might look at this and go, well, I'm a DBA, I just want to use Management Studio. And in the demo, you're going to see that it doesn't matter too much what's underneath. Our actual way that we interact with the database engine has not changed. And there is a whole heap of features that are included in SQL Server on Linux. And the best part is, I think it's my third, fourth to last slide, I show you how quickly Microsoft is responding to what the industry wants. Part of this whole Linux thing means that we need to, we have to install and configure applications uh, on, on our servers a wee bit differently. And Linux loves packages. And during uh, my demo, I'm going to be using Red Hat 7.7, uh, .7, uh, and I'm going to introduce you to Yum which is a package management utility, that we're going to install a whole heap of utilities and, and what have you, and software. And down the bottom there, we, we have packages. So we're going to install the MS SQL dash server package, uh, the MS SQL dash tools package. Put that down. Now, in the demo, I go through it very slowly, because there's no point just watching screeds of stuff <laughs> fly through the screen. I step you through it. When I build SQL Server on Linux on machines, on VMs, you know, I have a script and it just goes away and does it. There's no you know, input from me. Um, MS SQL Conf. I'm going to go over this quite a bit during the demo. Uh, the reason being is because it's the configuration script that allows us to you know, set our um, configurations on SQL Server. And it's very powerful. And we're going to do a couple of uh, things with it during the demo. And it's, 
um, it's the same as you know what we use in Management Studio and Configuration Management um, tool combined into one. Alrighty. So um, I'd like to thank Bob Ward for this picture, and in fact, this very tired-looking book, uh, Pro SQL Server on Linux, uh, is written by Bob Ward. And there was a technical editor for this book who is at the, uh, the back of the room, Anthony Nocentino. So thank you, mate, for making the SQL Server community far, far better. Um, but yeah, Pro SQL Server on Linux by Bob Ward. Great book. The reason why I say it's a great book is, one, it teaches you about Linux. But more importantly, there's a whole heap of engine stuff in there. So it's actually like half of the book is relevant for people running SQL Server on Windows. And in fact, I learned some stuff in there that I didn't know. So yeah, if you ha haven't considered, I strongly recommend you have a look at this book. It's brilliant. But yeah, this is where I got this picture from. So let's have a look, little look at SQL Server Linux architecture. So basically, we've got a single Linux process called SQL Server. There's no E in it uh, on the top right-hand corner there. And basically, we have our SQL Server.exe, a library OS, and SQL Power within it. And in our SQL Server, in the, in the box, uh, oh, here come colorblind. <laughs> On my other one, it was uh, gray. OK, that's cool. Um, I'll describe it, and you'll be able to tell. Uh, right. Um, we have um, SQL Server.exe uh, from Windows and all its associated DLLs, right? So this should be one you're very familiar with, SQL min.dll, um, SQL lang.dll. I don't even know what SQL min.dll is, but that's cool. <laughs> um, so we have our libOS, which is basically where all the DLLs and Windows services that support the Windows API and, you know, kernel32.dll and all that kind of stuff. And so what happens is we have this abstraction layer, which basically um, SQL PAL platform abstraction layer takes all the, all the um, things that SQL Server needs from Windows and translates it into what it needs from uh, Linux. And in fact, the way that the team architected SQL Server back in 2005, so SQL Server 2005, they had SQL OS which allowed them to actually abstract SQL Server from the operating system itself. So when they actually came to uh, transition it over to Linux, it was really, really easy. And in fact, the number of calls that are made from SQL Server to the actual Linux OS, is decre the, the kernel calls has decreased so, so much. All righty. Um, now, Linux. You know, um, the first time I uh, spun up Linux, which was a long, long time ago, 20 odd years ago, um, it, uh, it looked a heck of a lot different to what I was used to. You know, that had the slash, uh, there was no C drive. <laughs> um, and basically, I, where we start off, slash is called the root. It's where we start from. And basically, every single file and directory starts here. The only person who can write in root is a user called root, which has, uh, which has a very, very specialized um, security. Um, they're like, you know, uh, the super user, right? They're way, way up there. Um, <laughs> but slash root is the root user's home directory, uh, which is not actually the same as Slash, what's the root? Anyway. Um, slash var is where we keep our variable files. Um, so files can grow under this directory. Uh, and SQL Server has its default directory under this. So slash var slash opt ms SQL, which holds our log and config files. And we'll see this uh, in the demo. We also have our system log files and database files um, under here as well. Now slash opt is optional add-on application. It basically holds uh, the binaries and libraries of, of uh, SQL Server for us. And so as we navigate around, which we will in the, in the demo, um, you will see different things that I'm doing, and I will explain them as I go along. 
And if you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll go through it. <laughs> One of the things about Linux is it's case sensitive. Um, oh, in fact, I'll talk about that. Cool. So a directory may not actually be on the same drive. And so what we do in Linux, we mount uh, our directories. So in this case, var opt ms sql data could actually be on a different device, different disk drive, what have you, um, than var opt ms sql log. So we can split out data and log onto different devices. And that's a key thing. You, when, you, when we talk about volumes and all this, we're actually looking at uh, their actual devices attached to the operating system. Um, when we install SQL Server, we're going to have an MS SQL user and MS SQL group, which is automatically set up on uh, install. Uh, the home directory is home slash MS SQL. Uh, I will log on to uh, the, the, the VM, uh, and my home directory will be like slash home, I think, slash hwadmin. That's where I'm going to put all my stuff. And again, as I said before, it's case sensitive, and this catches me out a wee bit. And it's kind of good in some respects because it forces me to be to do standardised um, <laughs> stuff on on my server. So, hello world is not the same as hello world. If you get my drift, so you have to um, be aware of the capitalisation, and um, often you will probably see me do ls, which is uh, listing the directory. You'll see me do that quite a lot, because my demo, I haven't <laughs> followed uh, my standards, so some things are capital, capitals and some aren't, but anyway. Um, our hidden files are prefixed, prefaced with a dot, so dot bash underscore, underscore profile will be a hidden um, file, and, and you can see that on Windows as well. Uh, if you use source control, your dot git directory, you generally don't see it unless you turn on show hidden files. Bash shell is the common command language, and again, in uh, Callan's and uh, Randolph session, you're going to see them use Bash a whole heap. We're going to use Bash in my demo, but again, it's just to do some um, introductory stuff. Alrighty, um, Bash was built from the born shell with added plugins, so that's why it's called Bash. It's born again shell, um, and again, it's used for scripting. Here's a couple of useful Linux commands. Um, so I mentioned ls before. That's what I'm going to use to uh, list my directory contents. cd, same deal as uh, Windows with cd to change directories. Um, and ps, uh, so <laughs> funnily enough, I'll use ps a lot with my containers because uh, I'll show you when a container's running. But it's very same principle and everything. Um, so we can actually pipe things. So you'll see here I have ps-ef, uh, so every uh, process uh, and format, full format listing. And then I will pipe, so that's that horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical bar thing, into grep, which allows me to search for the word SQL. So that's a very powerful way of searching within uh, logs and everything. And, and we'll be doing a, a fair chunk of... Uh, searching and looking at files in the demo. Uh, MAN, uh, this stands for manuals. So if I want to look up stuff on PS, I'll type in MANPS and I get the manual and, and all that kind of cool stuff. Well, the great news is uh, I am actually going to do a demo now. We're actually going to deploy and explore SQL Server on Linux. The bad news is I have to uh, swap my display all around, which is um, going to be interesting. That's all good. Let me just get stuff ready. All righty. Cool. <laughs> uh, one of the hardest things about being a speaker is not the content. You can Google the content. The hardest part of being a speaker is <laughs> infrastructure. Um, I've, been, I've done a session once where all the monitor, monitors went out. I was describing DevOps deployment process. I had to literally do jazz hands. It was delicious. Anyway, what I have here is I use Azure, uh, the Azure portal, um, to build my VMs because I cannot bring a data center with me when I travel. 
So I build everything in Azure. Um, I use Azure Cloud Shell um, to, to build stuff out. Um, in fact, I'm just going to show you. And so earlier today, I have a whole heap of scripts uh, that I use for infrastructure as code. And I built my VM, and it's a wee blank VM uh, that I spun up. The cool thing about using infrastructure and code and scripts is that if something goes wrong, which it did on the weekend, I just deleted my VM and spun it up, you know, in moments. Anyway, so if you haven't started looking at the Azure portal, you should. It's awesome. Um, it enables you to do so much that you can't do on premises. And again, you know, um, I have the the cloud shell here. The reason why I use the cloud shell is I got sick of trying to work out if I need Azure RM or Azure CLI and all the clouds and all that. I was like, no, nah, I'm sticking with the cloud shell. Anyway, so my VM is uh, it's Red Hat 7.7. .7. Uh, it's got four CPUs, 16 gig of memory, but that's all cool. What I'm going to do to connect to it is I'm going to use an application called Putty. And the reason why I'm going to use Putty is because I'm old school. It was what I'd used back in the day, well, for quite a number of years. And there's a whole heap of other utilities that you can use to, to SSH into your Linux server. Um, just use whatever's best for you. I'm going to use Putty uh, just because it makes me smile. Um, what I just need to do is remember what the uh, IP address was that I signed. Um, and connect. Alrighty, how big is that? Let's. Is that big enough at the back? No? Okay, cool. Let's uh, rummage around and do, do a little bit better than that. Uh, so uh, let's make it real big. Because we've got heaps of screen, so let's use it. Cool. That better? Nice one. Alrighty. I'm going to log in as this person. Now, uh, I use really complicated passwords, so there will be a time where I have to actually stop talking <laughs> while I type in the password. Right, so last login. Uh, yeah, that was today. Um, that's probably in UTC time. Uh, how long has this been up? Yeah, so this has been actually up uh, an hour and nine minutes. Uh, so that's all good. Um, right, so let's do some stuff. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, pop in here, uh, grab uh, some commands real quickly, and then bring them over here. It's all good. Because you're going to see them here anyway. So all I'm doing here is I'm actually just showing you um, <laughs> that, um, that nothing's here. There's no match for all these things. I just want to show you, this is literally a blank VM. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, Linux VM. And there's some really cool um, commands that we can run. In fact, let's uh, get that back up the top. Um, so I can show you the version that I'm running. Uh, I can do a whole heap of commands uh, to show you some stuff. Well, what we'll do, because this one takes a wee bit of time, I'm actually going to um, update the applications and everything on my server. And so what this is doing, in this particular example, it is going out to the internet and grabbing these packages. Now, I could say to it, when you update your packages, you go to the server or this location. For me, it's just easy to do it from the internet. Um, so what it's doing is checking uh, for the latest update. So it's very similar to what we do in Windows, you know, the WSA server or WSUS, whatever you want to call it. And so it's going out and grabbing this stuff because there's a, there are quite a few things that we want to do to our blank <laughs> Linux VM. And again, this is Red Hat 7.7 .7, uh, that I installed earlier today. And this is taking a wee bit of time, but that's okay. I'll grab the next bit and we'll talk about stuff. Um, you will see, actually, let's. Okay, cool. Sweet as, okay. 
All right, so this is still doing some stuff. But that's okay. While it's installing uh, things, one of the things I'm going to show you is, again, how Management Studio, we're going to use that to connect to our uh, SQL Server instance that I'm going to install here on Linux. And if I've got time, I'm going to then install Docker and run a container and, again, show you how the UI, the experience of interacting with uh, SQL Server and databases is just the same regardless. Alrighty, well that's finished, that was kind of good. Um, what I'm doing here is I, I want to um, install uh, something, oh, it's already installed, that's good, uh, that uh, has been updated. Right, I'm going to talk to this uh, very slowly, because this is a very key thing that I'm doing here. Alright. Boom. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm telling my, I'm telling Yum, the config manager, where a repo is, because I'm actually going to install Docker during this bit, and so I'm t saying to it, right, add repo for here, which it has, and then what we're going to do is actually do a bit of install. Uh, the reason why I'm installing Docker is just so that later I, I haven't forgotten. Because what I'm going to do is install SQL Server, uh, but then I'll do Docker, as, uh, do it in a container as well. If you're installing SQL Server, that's a really good question. Why am I installing? Okay, cool. Thank you so much. You could use Podman, which is on the system. I'm going to use Docker. Yeah, that's all cool. Um, Alrighty, so yeah, it's doing a whole heap of stuff, which is all good. Sweet, uh, all good. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Almost said it. Um, and again, I'm going to use uh, the community edition of Docker and install it. So that's all cool. Now again, I would not be typically just standing here, you know, and doing this when I'm installing a server, but I just want to show you some of the steps that you go, that you go through when you're doing this. So that's cool, it's doing a bit of stuff. I'm also going to install Git. And in fact, before I install Git, I'm going to show you some stuff on our server because it's a very key thing that I'm about to do. So again, I just do want to reiterate that I would not be installing this if I was just doing a clean install of SQL Server because I kind of want to combine a couple of things. That's all good. But again, it's not too onerous. What I'm going to show you is my present working directory, or PWD. In fact, let's put it back up the top. Oh. Now, you'll notice I write, I've typed clear. Um, that's basically the same as CLS uh, in Windows. So my present working directory, where I am, is slash home slash hwadmin, which is my username. Um, and there's nothing in there at the moment. And a really cool tool, because sometimes you you might need to know this. <laughs> Who am I? Uh, existential question that I often ask myself, but anyway. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so yeah, let's install git. Um, and again, pretty simple. Um, you know, one line, and I could have put, um, told it to be a bit quieter, but again, I like to show people stuff. So I'm going to install git, and then what I'm going to do is actually clone from the repository, uh, a whole heap of files, because we're going to um, use those for, the, for this demo. And in fact, they're on uh, Microsoft's GitHub repository, um, which is pretty cool. That um, for all my stuff, I'm just going to say, go out to this location and clone it down into this directory. And what does that mean? Well, if I do ls now, I have a directory called SQL um, Linux Labs. And if I go in there, Notice I just tabbed, which is pretty cool, autocomplete. Um, there's a whole heap of stuff in there. Now, I could have done this, which is the same. I just didn't have to go into the directory, which is pretty cool. All righty. So now I have a whole heap of stuff. Um, and PWD is a very good one because it tells me exactly where I am. And in fact, let's have an, uh, another bit of look at our, our server because this is a particular one that I use a lot, which is top, which shows me what's the top consuming resources on my server at the time. 
At the moment, we don't have too much going on, which is kind of um, encouraging because we have a very blank server. Um, so yeah, but it's really good to, to look at that utility. Now the great thing is, Randolph Session goes through a whole heap of other utilities that you want, and you'll see in my demo script, I've commented out a whole heap of stuff because it's like, well, Randolph's gonna do this. Because I do uh, a session very similar to this, not exactly the same, but very similar to this at SQL Saturdays around the world. So anyway, all good. So let's do the main part, and in fact, uh, if I ever do this session again, I'm going to take out the Docker stuff. Um, I'm basically going to grab MS SQL Server 2017 from the repo. So I told that where to grab it from. Um, and it really is as simple as one line. And let's go get that back up. So I'm going to do install SQL Server dash Y. And away we go. And what it's doing is it's going out there, it's grabbing all the packages that it needs, because as I told you before, Linux loves, loves a little bit of package, and it's bringing them down, stalling them, making stuff go, which we like. Now, I'm gonna introduce you to how we configure stuff um, when the stuff comes down. Now again, reiterate, this could have all been done in a script, but then it would have just been smoke and mirrors. You're just like, yeah, okay, whatever, Hamish. Alrighty, while we wait for that, um, one of the things you should never do, and my good friend Callan is very strongly opinionated about this, and it's great to have a strong opinion at times, is never install, at times, never install SQL Server as root. Like, on Windows, do you install it as an administrator on your machine? And I know some people have. <laughs> Please don't do that. Anyway. Right, this here is msql-conf. And remember I talked about it as quite an um, important utility. We're going to use it to actually set up our instance. So, it's going to run. And it's going to ask me a question, the addition of SQL Server. I'm going to choose developer because I'm not the richest of people. Do I accept the license term? Yes, my lawyer will cover me. Right, so I'm gonna add in the SA password, okay? Please use strong SA passwords regardless of what platform you're on. And I have to stop talking now because I have to concentrate on the password. Cool. Don't worry, as we go on I get quicker at typing the 15 characters. Righty, it's now configuring SQL Server. Now, if I had just done this as a script, it's literally a couple of minutes to get SQL Server up and running, which is pretty cool. And the really cool thing is, is that again, because it's scripted, I can do a whole heap of stuff, right? So I can tear down my SQL Server, spin it up, in minutes, I don't care too much about it. And that's a very important differentiator when we start doing containers, because we actually start thinking of our SQL Server instance in a different way. You know, we're always, I always consider my persistence is, is SQL Server running? Or is it in a container world, I don't care. It could be gone. We, what we persist is our database. We'll talk about that later. Um, I can look at the status of MS SQL Server, so that's what we've just installed. And what we have here is, luckily it's active running, um, and I have been in situations where it hasn't been running. In fact, what I'll do is show you what this might look like if it was not running. Um, yep, cool. So I'm going to stop it. What's my status? It's, just, it's dead. So uh, right about here, inactive, dead. It's not going. So that's not good. Let's start her up. OK, start it up. That was a New Zealand colloquialism. That needs to go away. <laughs> All righty, start SQL Server up. Let's look at our status. It's running. You notice some stuff on the side. Can you read it? I can't. So what we'll do is we'll go and have a look at it. Um, but you'll see here we have two processes. 
Uh, one is uh, a, a watcher process to ensure that we know actually what's going to happen with our SQL Server. So um, I won't do any of this kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is show you a couple of commands that you can run to look in uh, the data directory. So again, this looks fairly familiar to us. We've got a master database, a model database, msdb, um, log.ldf, the whole shebang. Um, and if we look at log, so we've got a whole heap of logs that we're used to that we've seen once or twice uh, in our career, so that's all good. And some really cool utilities. In fact, I'll do that, yeah, I'll do this one first. Is tail. What tail does is it shows us the end of our log. So I might just want to see the log as it's updating. And in Windows, you have to go and install utilities and do this, that, and the other. Whereas I just use tail. It's built into Linux, which is awesome. Um, in fact, I think in Windows, there's a, something called uh, tail that you go and install MS tail there. I don't know. Um, what else? If I didn't want to use tail, um, I can use cat, which allows me to look in. And let's spell it correctly. <laughs> yep, cool. Let's not have the dash F. Honestly, people wonder why I copy and paste out of a file, because <laughs> I'm not really good at stuff. Um, <laughs> I get excited, and I'm like, ah. Anyway, so this is our error log. And so you know we can go in here, and it looks very similar to what we're used to, and it tells us the version, and this, that, and the other. It tells us really nicely um, what version of Linux we're on. That's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, it's pretty familiar to us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do I have? What's that? Sorry. Oh, okay, cool. Um, uh, yeah, thank you all so much. All righty. Um, cool. Yeah, if I'd just done it there. Um, so here I can look at things specific to TempDB. Because uh, I've done a few sessions in my time on tuning TempDB. Uh, I like TempDB. So anyway, I can actually go in there and look at specific stuff as I need to. Which is all good. OK. Um, again, I can do a whole heap of server stuff. Um, I won't do all of these. because, And you'll notice here, uh, this is to remind me not to do stuff, because it's in Randolph session. So if you want to look at <laughs> memory stuff, whatever, uh, go to Randolph session. Oh, do you want? OK. I don't know that I want uh, people to see how badly I write code, but anyway. No worries. <laughs> see, the cool thing about being a speaker is you have like a community of friends uh, that look, you know, that help you out every now and then. So, I, and we can work together. Yeah. Um, so I can uh, look at all the release info about the particular uh, version of Linux that I'm doing. So these are sort of commands that as a Linux administrator, you, you know, you might be doing. As a DBA, I might not be doing them. But if I look at the evolution of where DBA is going as a data platform engineer or a data engineer, I might want to know some of this stuff. And again, I'm just going to have it in a script file somewhere. It's, it's now part of my toolkit. Because as a good DBA, I do understand how the OS interacts with my, my SQL Server instance. When I used to look after DBAs in a previous job, because I now run my own company, I used to make them go, learn SANS and infrastructure and all these things, because I wanted them to be able to talk to those groups of people so that we could actually understand each other. Anyway. All righty. Let's do some database stuff. What do you reckon? Um, cool. I am going to grab some stuff. And what I'm going to do 
is this command here. So now you notice that it's changed. Where once I was HW admin, kind of a nice person, I'm now root, and I can do lots of stuff. And that's really dangerous, especially me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I need to grab some stuff, and I need uh, to do very important things on my server, so I am going to be root for a bit. That's OK. Um, I have, I've had sign off from management. Um, and what I'm going to do is install stuff. and. That was for the eagle-eyed amongst you to say, hey, you didn't type exit. Anyway. All righty. So I'm actually going to go out and get MS SQL dash tools, right? So this is another package. I've done the package of SQL Server. Now I'm doing the package of the SQL tools, which I like. So we're bringing that stuff down. And by now, you're just like, yeah, this is easy as, Hamish. I'm like, absolutely. Yes, I do accept the license terms because my lawyers told me to. And yes, done, whatever. But again, like that. Now, let's use some of those tools. Oh, and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add, you know in Windows how we have uh, environment variables uh, to uh, make us very efficient. So I might add environment variables, and, and you know, SQL Server puts uh, some of these in when you install Windows, so that you know, I can just type SQL command, blah, rather than t typing in slash opt, slash MS SQL dash tools, slash bin, slash SQL command, whatever. Um, by doing this, I'm actually um, putting that path into my profile, and I'll just apply it now. That's all cool. Boom, alrighty. So again, I've applied that to that hidden file because it's got a dot. Um, and now, let's actually connect to our SQL Server because it's what, been about 40 odd minutes. Uh, it's time to actually do something. Cool, I like a bit of password. Okay, this seems familiar as well. Does anyone use SQL CMD? Phew, <laughs> all righty, well, that's encouraging, because otherwise it would have been a little bit boring. Um, and strange, mostly strange. So again, I can, I can use this and do some things that are fairly familiar to me, right? And this is fairly um, familiar output, so this is kind of cool. Um, but let's do some more. I don't know, more sort of DBA-like stuff. Well, no, in fact, what I want to introduce you to is an awesome utility. And the first time I saw it um, demoed by someone, and in fact it was Randolph, um, I was like, that's awesome. Uh, MS SQL CLI is the future of your CLI interaction with SQL Server. And I'll show you soon why, and you'll be like, ooh, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's again, we've got to go and go away and pull down some stuff. Um, we've got our repo uh, defined, but now we're going to grab some things, our keys, what have you. And now I can install it fairly simply again, because I have all the things I need. Boom. And again, I just do this, let it run. So it's installing MS SQL CLI. And I'm hoping, so has anyone seen MS SQL CLI in action? So a couple of you, well the rest of you, there will become a point in this demo where you go, huh, that's pretty cool. Because I'm exactly replaying the words that went both in my head and out my mouth. But I thought about them for once. Okay. Now this looks fairly sim similar to uh, SQL, command, right? So I'm putting dash u, my user, in this case SA, uh, dash s, local host. So again, very, very similar to SQL CMD. Ask me for a password. That also is good.
And here we have it. I'm in master, and what I'm going to do is type badly. Oh, look at this. Oh, <laughs> it's got IntelliSense prompty stuff. That's pretty cool, right? Because now I don't have, you don't see me butchering the English language trying to type in here. Cool. And also, I don't have to type go. It's the little things. <laughs> but yeah, the other thing, the eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed that it's a little bit formatted a bit nicer. We'll see how this demo goes. We might do some more stuff. Um, so yeah, I can jump out of there. Oh, and I could have been teleprompt. It says goodbye as well. <laughs> you know what? Is it Canadian? <laughs> anyway, all right, we're going to do some stuff. Um, and again, um, we are going to do this slowly. Uh, and this again, my, yep, cool, I'm there. Um, so again, I'm just going to go into here. Um, and again, this is where um, I have a couple of files. Um, I've got some shell files, the .sh stuff. Um, so we're going to uh, rummage around in them. Uh, let's do this one. So again, I tab stuff. And now, my friends, we are truly Linux administrators because we're in VI or VI. I'm from New Zealand. We make up words. So I don't care what you call it. Well, either one of those two. But yeah, in here, so what are we doing? We're doing CP, which is copy. I'm going to copy um, a backup file. Um, when, in fact, I haven't got that backup file. I just remembered. I need to download it. That's cool. Yep. Uh, I'm going to copy it into far opt MS SQL. That's fine. I, could, I probably should copy it somewhere better, but whatever. Um, and you'll see here that I'm using chown, which means I'm changing the permissions on that file so that the MS SQL user can actually do a bit of stuff with it. So that's all cool. Boom. Welcome to Vi. Won't be the first, maybe the last time you use it. Now, I could have used Nano. I could have used a whole heap of other utilities to look in there. But when I saw Callan was in the room, I thought, Hamish, do Vi. And the cool thing was, when I said you could use Nano, I quickly looked, and she's shaking her head. <laughs> yes, Randolph West. Yes, I do have the cheat sheet, and we're going to do it later. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's All righty. So... What I'm going to do, I'll just make sure I still am in that directory. Yes, I am. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to allow um, the script that I just showed you to be able to be executable. So uh, that is quite important. Um, and in fact, I think it's the other one too. And this is a really cool thing. You can do a couple of letters and again, tear. Oh, yeah. oh, this is why I normally. Um, copy and paste from a notepad. Anyway. Cool. So I've, I've allowed those two um, files to be executable because I um, do actually want to run them. But um, the most important part is uh, actually getting uh, the file. And this is a really cool thing in, um, in Bash is that I can run commands, I can go out, whoa, do some stuff, um, and again, I'm downloading this file from a particular uh, repo out in GitHub. Um, and if I go ls, there it is right there. Okay, so as we saw in the, the script, I'm going to copy that into um, a directory. So, in fact, I'll get this back up there. Done. <sighs> Um, so yeah, I think I trust myself with that. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to run it, and effectively, it's going to copy it into a directory. I could have done a move, whatever. Um, and again, I'm doing this as sudo. What's sudo? Sudo is a super user that I can uh, kind of impersonate and able to do stuff. And you saw me at the beginning when I did the first sudo, I was asked for a password. I entered in a very long password. Uh, and now we can do some elevated stuff. It's kind of like right click, you know, run as uh, administrator, that kind of thing. Um, now. Why did you just type in a password, Hamish? Good question. Uh, this is the password because in the restore um, uh, script, uh, I'm connecting to SQL Server, but I'm not putting the password in there. So this is the actual SA password. So um, what we're going to connect to SQL Server with. And this bit here is always where I slow down because I'm not always sure if I've done everything correctly because I'm normally typing. Uh, as fast as I talk, which is why I sometimes slow down, and I definitely script stuff out. Um, but what it's doing is it's copying it into SQL Server, and it's restoring it, and I'll, I'll show you the files in a sec. I just want to make sure this works. Um, the reason why it takes a wee while is it's actually upgrading it. The, the backup file we have um, is two thirds. <laughs> I know, right? Like, it's pretty sad that me being able to restore a database. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> I get a standing ovation almost. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking this 2016 uh, backup file and uh, SQL Server upgrades it. You've, you've seen this uh, before uh, when you do it in the UI. Um, so that's all good. Um, I reckon we're almost ready to get amongst... Oh, yeah, look at that. Um, and again... Hamish, just wait, mate. Because I normally, I'm like, why is it not doing something? And then I'm off to, uh, doing stuff. No, no, let's just wait. All right. This, my friends, is where you'll really see some awesomeness. And I feel a little bad because I have, there is someone in the room that the next thing I'm going to do is going to make them cringe because they are one of our industry's leading tuning people. Um, but yeah, I do it just for a laugh. Oh yeah, cool, done. I think I could have remembered that. Um, cool, so again, with SQL Command, I'm just changing the database context. I was a master, now I'm going to use uh, worldwide importers. And like any good DBA database developer, I'm going to have a look at all the contents from here. And I'm lazy as select star. The reason why I do select star, I want to pay Hamish's mortgage, because I'm like, SQL Server's running really bad. What do we do? And I come in, I'm like, that's going to be a four-hour engagement. I look up what columns they need, and thank you very much. <laughs> but look at this. This is a bit yuck, apart from the slick star, of course. But the formatting. And I mean, I had to put up with this for many, many, many haircuts. <laughs> Looking at that. So of course, I'd put it out to CSV file, whatever. But Oh, I can't wait to show you this. Oh, I hope no one gets offended by some of the language in my files. Um, it, <laughs> it, um, it is literally, um, now that is a New Zealand word, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> proofread your stuff. Now again, I'm connecting to um, my local host, Easy As. Yeah. It's actually... Yep, cool. Done. Yay. Back in here. Um, and do I do a select star? Yeah, I do. Nice. Cool. Now, you'll notice this also. This is a great little bit. I can do it all on the same thingy-majiggy line. There we go. But the best part is, ooh, that's pretty cool. And look at that. And I can go through and, I don't know. That seems a little bit better. A little bit? Yeah, OK, cool. Done. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. And again, oh, I'm still in the, the, the database. It tells me which database I'm in. That's pretty cool. But, and again, it says goodbye. That's nice. <laughs> Honestly, it is the small things in life that amuse me. Um, now, I'm going to show you this, because this is awesome. Um, and again, I am, I'm a sort of person, oh, 
okay. <laughs> it's gone all crunchy, whatever. Um, that's okay. I love the MS SQL Conf uh, utility because it enables me to script stuff um, in SQL Server so that when I come to build many SQL servers, I'm doing something that's standard, right? So I can apply this to one SQL Server or 50 or whatever. Um, and it's really cool because it tells me that I need to um, oink, yep. Uh, restart SQL Server. So yes, you do have to stop restart services in um, Linux uh, because uh, in this particular one we are actually changing, um, we're putting on trace lag 3226. Um, anyone want to guess, like you know what 3226 is, right? Okay, cool, I see some shaking the heads, that's awesome, I get to tell you stuff. 3226 stops backup messages going into my error log. That's kind of nice. Because when I go to look at errors in the error log, guess what I want to see? Errors. I don't want to see your backup diagnostic login that's in there every minute. Anyway, yeah. So 3226, pretty cool. Let's do one. Oh, actually, I'm not going to do. Oh, let's do this one. Because I'll introduce you to more. This is when more is less. Uh, um, so what this does, um, more actually gives me a page at a time, and you can see dash T3226. Yay, my trace flag's on there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but what I can also do, uh, oh, yeah, I can do, um, you know, some standard stuff. I can actually use DBCC trace status, you know, look at the global stuff. I don't need to do that. Um, what I'm going to do... Yeah, let's do uh, Management Studio. And I wish I'd copied this in there before, but that's okay. Right, I'm actually going to connect with Management Studio uh, into my server. Uh, I'm not, oh, ha, ha, ha. I'm connecting it through the internet, so I haven't, I'm not going to do port 1433. Okay, let's copy that in there anyway. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to stick to my script because there was a reason why I did this. Um, because I have exposed my server to uh, the internet, I didn't want to use port 1433. And what I uh, do not have is, um, uh, I do not have a rule in there for 1433, I have one for this one. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to tell SQL Server to listen on port 59666, uh, which is just a random port that I made up. Um, but what I need to do is tell uh, my server to actually add that port, which is all good, so that that's now allowed. And we just need to reload our firewall, which is all good. Uh, it's pretty simple, it's one line. Done, and what I need to do is restart SQL Server. Brilliant. So again, it's just like what we do in Windows. You know, we use Configuration Manager. We we change the port, this, that, and the other. But that's all good. Um, so now, what I want to do. Uh, so in the Azure portal, I had already um, added the address. So let's actually see if I can connect. appears I may have. <laughs> um, the reason why this is happening like this, this particular VM is in Southeast Asia, <laughs> and my Linux VM is in West US, just because I don't really like myself. Um, <laughs> I want to show you this, though. It's a little penguin just up there. It's the little things in life that make it awesome. Well, that's all good. Um, and my friends... This is even better. <laughs> the fact uh, that, you know, that's the database that I used, you know, that I did stuff with. Now, the really cool thing is, and I sort of allude to this later on, um, I can now do some of the tuning stuff and do some things that I've been used to. Wow, that's a horrible um, 
query. Oh, here's my select star, right? <laughs> but yeah, I can start using some of the things that I'm used to using, right, as a DBA. Now, I can do, you know, a whole heap of other stuff. There is the normal stuff. And I encourage you to, you know, have a go. You know, um, pull it down and then start looking around and seeing what you can do. And, you know, because some things are going to inherently look just a little bit different. Right, so all this kind of stuff. And we might want to configure that, we want to do a whole heap of stuff. But that's cool. There's a whole heap of stuff out on the internet that tell us and show us how to do this. All righty. So I think what I'll do is um, we might stop there because uh, that literally is, you know, we're at the point where we've got SQL Server running on Linux. We've restored a database. I mean, really, what else is there to do in DBA world? <laughs> Querying, uh, query tuning. And that's why I showed you Query Store. If you haven't seen Query Store, please go have a look at it. It's awesome. It really is. It's, a, it's a, like a flight recorder for um, SQL Server. Anyway, I'm going to do a few more um, slides. We'll wrap this up. I won't sleep my Mac because that would be terrible. Which one, sorry? Tune. Tune. Tuned. Tuned. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, oh, nice. So there was a. Cool. So if you really want to look at performance stuff, there is a utility called Tune D. Um, assume the D stands for daemon, nice, um, that you can go out and look at and it's updated regularly. So as I said before, some things are very similar to us um, in terms of troubleshooting. But like anything, we need to consider what we are actually troubleshooting and where we're going. So we might actually need to look at what software is installed, look at some SQL Server logs, or even some operating system logs. And again, this is daunting at the beginning, once you do it once or twice, it's all good. Um, and as I said, you know, these files should look fairly familiar to you. If they don't, you should probably go have a look at some of them at some stage. Um, you know, one of the things I want to talk about is, is memory consumption, because I was thinking, what, what's some of the things that could catch you out? And you know, on a Windows-based server, memory management, basically the server just goes slow and everything goes horrible. Whereas in Linux, we have an out-of-memory killer, which basically comes along and chooses something and kills it. I don't really want to do that with our database um, engine. So there's a couple of things we've got to do. We've got to look at you know, our memory limit configuration. So I, I assume you all configure you know, Mac server memory setting in SQL Server. If you don't, please do. Um, there's a, um, a blog site called Born SQL that has a really cool matrix that I use a lot because I can never remember the numbers. You know, like if you have 64 gig of RAM on your server, you'd do 50, 64 gig, you might do 55 or 56 server max memory. Born SQL, server max memory, go look it up. Oh, you write that, don't you, Randolph? Fantastic. Yeah, so we need to do some troubles. Um, you know, we may look at the process. Before we were looking at the operating system, we might look at the process. And again, there's a couple of things we can look at, like PIDSTAT. Um, or then we might use some DMVs to look at. So the really cool thing is that we have DMVs that we can use on Linux that we had used on Windows. And of course, my favorite tool in all the world that I never tell my clients <laughs> is Query Store for troubleshooting. I love it. It's awesome. And yeah, there's a whole heap of DMVs for troubleshooting. I'm not going to go on these because you can just Google them. The, the really cool thing is Microsoft have done a whole heap on docs.microsoft.com. Um, but the Nexus utility, this is pretty cool because now we can actually uh, hook this up to um, our Linux uh, server. And yeah, this all leads into SQL Server on containers because we can run our SQL Server in a container now that it's on Linux. And it means that we can run anywhere Docker supported, on my Mac, on Windows, wherever. 
and it leads into running on Kubernetes. But the really cool thing is it's really good for upgrades. I basically just, I persist my database and then I just point it at a new version. It really is almost as simple as that. And the cool thing is, as we scale out, and these slides I have uh, borrowed from my good mate, Bob Ward, Kubernetes allows us to scale out and do HR and DR, right? So we can do this with no clustering, right? So I don't have to build availability groups and Windows Server file clusters, because you can't do that in Linux. Um, but the really cool thing is, a user connects to our load balancer service, which is connecting to a pod uh, on a node. What does that mean, Hamish? A node is the equivalent of a VM, and the pod will typically have one container or a couple. Because you know the symbol for um, uh, Docker, right? It's a whale. So you have a pod of whales. Okay. Um, anyway, so I'm connecting to my SQL Server. My database is on persistent volume storage. That's where we're persisting stuff now. And so if my container running SQL Server dies, Kubernetes just spins it up pretty quickly. And so for my user, they don't notice, any, well, they might notice an outage, right? But they don't have to reconfigure anything. But what if the whole node, which is equivalent to a VM, and it is typically, it is typically a VM, but it's, it's, you think of it like that, <coughs> Kubernetes will spin up the pod, right, my container, on another node. It's awesome. Um, I'm doing a session on Kubernetes, uh, I think tomorrow. I can't remember when, I think it's in the morning. I have to check each day when I'm speaking. I'm speaking 11 times in four days, but anyway. Um, this is uh, number four. I think that SQL Server on Linux is a game changer. And the reason why is because of industry adoption. I have had to have discussions with some people who say we're a Linux shop, We'll go Oracle. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I don't have that conversation anymore. I can actually say, well, guess what? SQL Server runs on Linux. And for me, infrastructure as code, the ability to actually script something out in a meaningful, easy way, SQL Server on Linux, and, even, and more importantly, SQL Server on containers, oh my goodness. I can spin stuff up, tear it down, spin it up again, see the database, just yeah, it's brilliant. And again, it's a standard setup for development. I typically, um, when I work with clients, if they are a Docker shop, we uninstall SQL Server on their laptops, and I just give them an image. That's pretty cool. Um, and again, with Kubernetes, you know, this has been a cool journey. We've gone from, we run SQL Server on Linux, we can now containerize it, and now we can scale it out. And I, I can run a Kubernetes cluster on my Mac just to try stuff out. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, things are being <coughs> added all the time. Earlier this year, we didn't have replication. We didn't have distributed transaction in Linux. We didn't have polybase and machine learning services. But the cool thing is, Microsoft is adding stuff in there more and more. So we've got no excuse. So this is in um, SQL Server 2019, which is coming out really soon. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm oh, sorry, it's a joke. I'm a Kiwi. Um, I encourage you to go to this GitHub site. I encourage you to learn how to use GitHub because um, the SQL Linux Labs is awesome. It's a great way to um, do stuff and it's a great way to keep, you, keep your demo almost working. There are cheat sheets. Uh, the Linux cheat sheet here is pretty cool. It's fairly basic, but the cool thing is you can just Google stuff. And unfortunately, I could not get the formatting on the, the cheat sheet. Yeah, don't worry. Um, but here's another cheat sheet. Now you have to go to uh, Kalen's and Randolph's session to see the uh, cheat sheet. Yeah. Oh, nice. Woohoo! So here's the summary. Give it a go. You can spin up a VM in Azure under three minutes, right? So if you haven't started playing with Azure, give it a go. AWS if you want. Um, come online is essential. Utilities are your mates. But there's a few out there, you've got to choose. And some will get you so far, but you've got to choose which ones provide you with what you need. And there's a, there's a raft of them. Just do whatever works for you. It's pretty tough at, fast, uh, at first, but it gets easier because here's the deal. You learn your language at one stage when you're like two. 
Words were pretty hard. So scripting in Linux initially. But then it gets really easy. Um, and I encouraged to build a toolkit with all, all your scripts, right? And to put that in source control. That's the finish of this first in the learning pathways. Mine is an intro um, session that will be built on by my two friends. So please go along to them. They're going to be awesome. Way better than this one. So consider that. Um, if you have questions, can we keep them brief? The reason being is because I have to go and do speaker idle now. <laughs> it's been one of those days. Um, Session evaluations. Please submit them by 5 p.m. Friday, November 15th. Um, go to passsummit.com, um, follow the QR code, uh, and because there's, there's stuff that you can uh, win. So, look, thank you very much. Uh, my name's Hamish Watson. Um, I could say vote Hamish, but I'm a Kiwi. We don't do self promotion, so this feels way better. Just vote in the board elections. Thank you so much. Have a good day. I'll be hanging around for a bit. <laughs>